Hi and welcome in this video in which I'm going to explain how you can overcome your pyresis, also known as shy bladder syndrome, in less than four weeks without having to use any drugs or medication, without having to use any distraction technique or avoidance technique, and without having to talk about it to anyone else. This technique, I've called it the free bladder solution. This method will allow you to beat your shy bladder syndrome and be able to pee freely in public toilet, even if you have tried everything else without success, even if it's been affecting you for years or even decades, and even if you don't know where it comes from. So how do I know all that? It's because I was a paralytic myself for 17 years. It started for me at age 16, like most of the people with shy bladder syndrome. And during that time, I didn't tell anyone I was living alone with it, like most of us. And I thought I was the only one to have this condition. I mean, I didn't even know it was called pyresis or shy bladder syndrome or whatever. I thought it was just only me, it was my problem, and I was alone in this world and that there was no solution at all. Luckily for me, I found a solution, which I'm about to share with you just after, which allowed me to free myself from pyresis. People living with pyresis have many problems, but I am gonna list five of them right now. The first problem is thinking that it's a physical problem, but intuitively we know that is not the case because of course, yes, we cannot pee in a public setting or when there are people, but we also know that when we are in a safe environment, when our privacy conditions are met, most of the time meaning there is no one around who can hear or see us, then we can pee freely. And what that means is that it's not a problem with our body, it's not a problem with our bladder or whatever. It's something that is a block coming from our brain that is sending a signal to the bladder to, to stop the flow. And so what it means is that it's an irrational fear. Basically, that's what we call a phobia. And today, it's actually classified as a social phobia. The second problem paralytics are facing is that Exposure therapy is long and complicated. Exposure therapy is efficient and it involves a pee body where with whom you are gonna walk, facing your fear and gradually increasing the difficulty um, of him being closer and closer uh, into your intimacy zone. The problem with this method is that first of all, you need to find a pee body, meaning you need to talk about your paralysis to people, which depending on your personality might not be that easy. The second thing is that once you have found someone, then you need to find uh, a schedule that fits both of the both person lifestyle. Then you need to do the practice and this takes a lot of time. And although it's also effective, gradual exposure is not always easy to put into practice and if you work in a big city, it might be easier, but if you live in the countryside, good luck with that. The third problem, which is a bit linked to the previous one, is that it's extremely embarrassing to talk about it to anyone. You know exactly what I mean if you have not talked about it to anyone, is like even like just thinking about telling other people, whether it's your doctor, your urologist, or your partner, or your family, just thinking about it triggers a lot of fear in you because it's just so simply scary, you know, like, like all important conversation, we know it might free us a bit, but just thinking of starting the conversation is extremely difficult. And in the case of your doctor or urologist, what might happen is that you will be faced with total uh, non-understanding of the problem because they have never heard of this kind of phobia and straight away they will do what they do best they will think it's a physical problem and as you know now you know it's not a physical problem you know it's uh, something in your in your in your mind and uh, you won't get any response and you will feel even more down talking about your doctor or your urologist. Fourth problem is that there are drugs available on the market 
that are supposed to decrease our stress level. And by decreasing our stress level, sometimes we can pee in some public situation. But there are problems with this, this solution is that, first of all, peeing is something we have to do every day of our life until we die. And most of the time, several times per day. And so, in general, drugs, they have side effects, and we just can't imagine what it's going to be taking drugs until the end of our life to supposedly, allegedly, um, solve or help us pee. And by drugs, I mean also alcohol, because for some people, alcohol is a helper in some social situation. Yeah, we can drink a bit and it helps us pee, but we understand that we can't become an alcoholic just to pee freely in our life. And the other problem there is, is it's going to be very bad for your bank account because drugs are costly and affording them every day until the end of our life, this is, this is a huge amount of money. The fifth problem is that avoidance techniques do not solve the root cause of the problem. In avoidance techniques, there are several of them, but the most common are simply, first of all, not going to the places you are fearing. For example, you might not go to some concert or music festival, although you like music, because you know that there is, there is, there is no intimacy, there is no room for paying uh, freely and that you just prefer not going instead of you know facing the the struggle of uh, being able to pee there the second thing you can do also is simply drink less avoid drinking fluids so in order not to you know trigger the, the sensation of uh, wanting to pee and the third technique that is known now is called the breath holding, the breath hold technique, where basically you hold your breath and it, it, it allows you to, to pee. It's great if you master it, but we understand that this, this technique, they have an impact on the consequence of the paresis, meaning the fact of not being able to pee, but they do not solve the cause of it meaning the problem that is blocking us, the fear that is blocking us in our mind. The consequences of all that is that people with shared syndrome are constantly living with a dark cloud above their head that is following them everywhere because, I mean, there is no way to avoid peeing in, in, in a day, uh, in our life in general. And so this dark cloud is always with us. And this affects the life of people living with paresis in a several way, but here I'm gonna mention four of them. The first consequence it can have on someone's life is that it can affect your professional life. Yeah, because right now you might be comfortable in the job you have, you probably really are, but you are scared of switching a job. Maybe you are refusing a promotion or you are hesitating changing company because you simply don't know where you are going to end up and you don't know if your intimacy condition will be met there. And so basically what you do is like you are holding back on your own career, on your own professional life and in general it translates into your income you are going to make. And so that's a real burden not to be able to fulfill the career we want to. The second consequence it can have is that it can affect the social family or love life of someone with shy bladder syndrome. Okay, just imagine, like, we can't avoid being, like, so basically if you live with someone, maybe your, your, your partner, your, your wife or your husband, whatever, I mean, you have to pee. And so if you cannot or you have huge difficulty, this is going to create tension or weirdness and and some unsaid in the relationship and it can create some uh, some un non-understanding and, and over time it can degrade the relationship and in regards to children if you have some it, it maybe you are not able to go to social events or you know sports events or some activities they would like to do with you but you just cannot because you know you will have struggle to pee or maybe it's simply going, taking a long haul 
flight to go on vacation and you cannot do that and your family do not understand why you always want to go in, in the close vicinity. And so we understand that this fact of not being able to live the social life we want is a really big donor on someone's life. The third point, and it's a sad one, is that it can affect the mental health. I mean, I've talked with dozens and dozens of people with shy brother syndrome, and sometimes there are people who, have, who are in depression because of that, because they simply cannot have the life they want to have. And so, you know, in general, when you cannot have what you want, then you start to depress, you start to see things negatively, and it affects your whole mood, you, you start uh, maybe losing some friendship, some relationship, and then you start to isolate yourself. And, you know, it's like a downward spiral and it can, it, it can go really bad. I mean, you can start to, to have a really dark mental health because of just this simple fact of not being able to pee in front of other people. Okay, the first consequence possible is that it can affect your passions, your leisure activities or your hobbies. For example, let's say you love music, clearly you are not going to go to a music festival or a big concert because you know for sure that there your intimacy condition won't be met because in general people are queuing for long queues, uh, you are in a rush, your intimacy conditions are very low and so it's just a, just a nightmare. I mean, when you have paralysis, it's, you don't want to go near those places. And same if you like sports, maybe you won't go to the stadium because same, it's a, it's a crowded place and, and you know, people are, um, uh, there are a lot of people and you don't want to face the situation. And so basically, again, it's a bit related to some previous point, but basically you cannot do the things you want to do in life. And when you don't do the thing you want to do in life, then your life is becoming worthless and that's terrible i mean like we should be able to do what we want and so that's that's a terrible consequence for people living with shy bladder syndrome again but i have a good news for you everything i've just mentioned can be a thing from the past for you if you decide to use the free bladder solution and i'm gonna describe right now how it works when you live with shy bladder syndrome there are three steps that repeat themselves over and over and over again. So let's break them down. The first one is before going to the loo. You start to get anxious just thinking of going there. We record that anticipatory anxiety. And mostly this is due to your past failure because it's like a vicious circle. The more you fail, the more you fear failing and so on. And so now every time you think of going to the loo in a public place, you start to get anxious just thinking about it, just to just knowing that you have to go. The second step is the fear of not succeeding. So here you are in the toilet, in front of the urinal or in the stall, and a lot of things start to go through your mind like, am I, am, am I gonna be able to do it? Is the guy next to me looking at me? Can they hear me? I mean, you have a lot of fears going through your mind and it's like um, rambling and, and this negative talk and, and you, basically you're just building up everything to make you block and most of the time obviously you block. And so in general all those fears coming in, in our head they come from our past and most of the time past traumas. And then the third step is the mental rumination we have after. Uh, in general, it's a lot of shame, it's a lot of hate against ourselves. It's um, we don't understand why, why us, and and just it's it's just like a broken record in our mind saying why me, why me, why me, and 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 basically we go back where we come from without having managed to succeed, or we just do some technique like we fake washing our hands, like if everything went fine, but in reality, in our mind, we are just full of rumination and negative self-talk. And the problem with that is that this negative self-talk 
will reinforce the fear we had before. And so here we are back into the circle. So knowing all that, we can identify the three steps to overcome our shy bladder syndrome. The first one is going to be to identify our fear. The second one is going to be to eliminate those fear by working on them thoroughly. And the third one is going to be to enjoy the freedom of being able to pee in public places and finally regain control of our life. So how does this translate in the free bladder solution? If we take an analogy with the army vocabulary, the first step is going to be to take arms. Okay, you need the right weapons to, to fight your paralysis. And for that, I will give you a toolbox with several tools in it. Where, and you can pick what, where, which the one you prefer. But the main one I focus on is called EFT for Emotional Freedom Technique. And today EFT, it's a known tool uh, for beating anxiety and working on phobias. And well, I can see you, okay, I don't know EFT, how I'm supposed to do, don't worry. This is a simple technique. I, and in the program, I really go into detail on it step by step how you do how you can do it and trust me by the end of this program you will you you'll be using EFT on an advanced level the second step of the method is fighting okay if we continue with the army analogy we have taken a weapon but now we need to use it to help us and so here what you will be doing is that you will be identifying what is blocking you and you will be dealing with it one by one. And in every lesson, uh, we, we, you will go into deep uh, detail on what is blocking you, how you can um, get rid of it. Once again, I'm guiding you all the way through in, in videos, in lessons, in uh, support material. You have everything for you to follow and work on yourself. The third step is going to be freedom and enjoying it. But it doesn't mean this is over because along the way you have learned some great tools and I will show you how you can use those tools to work on other aspects of your life and improve other things that are beyond the Scheibader syndrome. And all that will help you to better your life for good. Like I said earlier, I lived with paralysis for 17 years and I know very well the daily nightmare it is to live with this condition. And this is why I wanted to create a solution that is simple and natural, that does not rely on drugs or any avoidance technique. I wanted to create a solution that can adapt to anyone's lifestyle because you work at your own rhythm it's online, you work when you can, and you can fit it anywhere in your lifestyle. I also wanted to create a tool where persons with shy bladder syndrome do not need to tell other people about it, because in my case, that was one of my biggest fear in life. I didn't want to talk about it, and I didn't want to share it with anyone. I just wanted to be able to work on myself on my own and get rid of it. And lastly, I wanted to be able to create a method where I'm giving people tools they can use for life and which will empower them and where they can improve their life on things that are beyond the shy bladder syndrome. If you want to overcome your shy bladder syndrome, be able to pee in public toilet and regain control of your life for good, then act right now. Below this video, you will find links and buttons for you to buy the method and join today. If you have any question regarding the, this video or the program, don't hesitate to send me an email and I will reply to you. To conclude this video, I wanted to tell you that Shabblada syndrome is not a fatality and you don't have to live with it until your last day. I lived with it for almost two decades and I've managed to free myself from it like many other people before me and after me. And so can you. And so from the bottom of my heart, the, all I wish for you is to overcome this nightmare and be able to pee freely. I will see you on the other side and maybe next to you at the urinal.